Hey, good morning, my friends. Derek from Bomb Socks here with more Bomb Bites, where we feast upon the words of Christ. We do it one bite at a time. So uh, yesterday I gave you a verse one of the Joseph Smith history, uh, and Joseph gives this to, as he said, to disabuse the public mind. And I think that's an interesting phrase because the word disabuse means to persuade someone's previously held false belief. And so the whole purpose of doing this is you got people fighting against the church. And Joseph's like, okay, whoa, everybody, let me put you in position possession of the facts here because rumor seldom comes close to truth. And so here's where Joseph gives you a little bit of background on where he is at. Now in verse number two, he says, in this history, I shall present the various events in relation to this church in truth and righteousness as they have transpired or as they at present exist, being now 1838, the eighth year since the organization of said church. So he is writing this eight years after the fact, and he's giving this because at this point, keep in mind, church history in 1838, you go there, it is chaos going on. When you're looking at the stuff going on in Kirtland, when you look at the stuff that's going on in Missouri, there's craziness going on. And Joseph was like, all right, time out, everybody. I want to give you the facts and let me help because there's all kinds of rumors going on out there. So he starts off introducing us to his family, which I absolutely love that. So you go to verse number three. He says, I was born in the year of our Lord, 1805, on the 23rd day of December in the town of Sharon, Windsor County, state of Vermont. My father, Joseph Smith Sr., left the state of Vermont and moved to Palmyra, Ontario, now Wayne County, in the state of New York when I was in my 10th year or thereabouts. In about four years after my father's arrival in Palmyra, he moved with his family into Manchester in the same county of Ontario. Now, let me show you the family right here. Obviously, not an actual photo, but it would be cool to be able to see an actual photo here of this crew. Uh, his family consisting of 11 souls, namely my father, Joseph Smith, my mother, Lucy Smith, whose name previously to her marriage was Mac, daughter of Solomon and Mac. Oh, and if you, let me pause for a moment. If you want to read some cool stuff, go read about Solomon Mac. Oh, he's got some great stories as far as his journey of faith and how his faith really helped, I believe, Lucy get her faith. There's some great stuff there. Now, let me get back to this here. Uh, my brother's Alvin. Oh, I love Alvin. Alvin, who died November 19th, 1823. We'll get into that. Uh, in the 26th year of his age, Hiram, myself, Samuel Harrison, William, Don Carlos, and my sisters, Sophronia, Catherine, and Lucy. Uh, Sophronia, they called her Sophie. Uh, and so anyway, that's, you got the family right there. Great family. Now I had mentioned to you the importance of using saints as a resource. In saints, they really give you a little bit of, uh, they give you some of this history right here. So let me, let me summarize some of this. This, this again is not to replace your reading of saints, but just to give you an idea of kind of what you're going to be reading about. So first 20 years of Joseph Sr. and Lucy Smith's marriage. One, Lucy almost dies from tuberculosis. She has that infectious lung disease of tuberculosis. Um, their store failed. They had a little store that they had and that failed. Joseph Sr.'s venture in selling American ginseng overseas is successful, but a dishonest agent steals the profits. Um, he actually gets out there and he's able to get all of this ginseng um, and really ginseng at the time, it was very much, I mean, Joseph Sr. was an entrepreneur uh, in every sense of the word. And most people back then were. Um, they're going to find different things that they can do. A lot of people read about gold digging. Yep, that's kind of what you did back then. You, you tried to find whatever you could to be able to build an income for your family. So because of that, they move eight times in the first 16 years of their life, trying to find a way to be able to help out their family. All nine of their children get typhoid fever, which causes seven-year-old Joseph Jr. to develop a bone marrow infection overcome only by an agonizing and near crippling surgery. Many of us are familiar with that story. It's crazy. And, and one of the things I love about that story is you have a doctor by the name of Nathan Smith who happened, just so happened to be living five miles where the Smith family was living at the time. And I love how the Lord orchestrated the Smith family to the place where they were five miles away from this country doctor, Nathan Smith, who happened to be the only doctor in the world who understood, it was called osteomyelitis, how he was able to be able to help Joseph with that. Only guy who knew how to do that surgery. Coincidence? Absolutely not. God knows what he's doing, guys. Okay, all this illness causes another move to a rock-bound farm where they have to borrow money to try and make ends meet. 
in 1816. And this is actually where chapter one starts off. You even look um, at saints, it's got a picture of a volcano right there. A volcano erupts in Indonesia, causing frosts into summer, killing their crops. In fact, it was called the year without a summer because it brought that ash over here and it caused it so nobody could grow crops during that year. So everybody's crops were failing during that time, including Joseph Sr. Uh, because of this, Joseph Sr. has to leave the family in Vermont to search for opportunities on the western New York frontier, which moves his family then to Palmyra, New York in the year 1816. So I love again, and here's a cool little principle, how the Lord has this ability to be able to orchestrate people into different places at different times, putting people into your life. And I think a lot of us can testify to the truthfulness of that, how there are people brought into our lives at certain times for such a time as what we are going through. And that's what the Smith family went through for that first uh, 20 years or so of their lives. Well, you get into verses five and six, and there is, as Joseph says, an unusual excitement on the subject of religion. This is what is called the second great awakening that's going on. People are just excited about religion. It commenced with Methodists, but soon uh, became among all of the sects and regions in the country. Indeed, the whole district of the country seemed affected by it. Great multitudes united themselves to different religious parties, which created no small stir and division amongst the people. Some crying low here, others low there. Some were contending, that's an interesting word, contend means to fight, contending for the Methodist faith, and some for Presbyterian, and some for the Baptist. Four, notwithstanding the great love which the converts to these different faiths expressed at the time of their conversion, and the great zeal manifested by their respective clergy, clergy who were active in getting up and promoting this extraordinary scene of religious feeling in order to have everybody converted as they were pleased to call it let them join what sect they please yet with yet when the converts began to file off some to one party and some to another it was seen that the seemingly good feelings of both the priests and the converts were more pretended than real for a scene of great confusion and bad feeling ensued priest contending after priest, convert after convert, so that all their good feelings, one for another, if they ever had any, were entirely lost in a strife of words and a contest about opinions. Like I said, it's a good thing stuff like that doesn't happen in our day. As you read that, some of you are looking back at 2020 and going like, hmm, a strife of words and a contest of opinions. So now leading up to what caused Joseph to have that first vision, I want you to go through and I want you to read verses 8, 9, and 10. Okay, now again, keeping in mind, there's a lot going on that is very similar to what is going on in our day for anybody who is an honest seeker of truth. And here's Joseph. He's seeing these religious parties fighting with each other. He sees the hypocrisy of it. And he's just like, ah, I don't know what to do. And so um, just take, take a minute, go through and read verses 8, 9, and 10. I want to come back. I want to show you a couple words that I think are super important that very much describe our day. Okay, so you look at verse number eight, and here's Joseph. During this time of great excitement, my mind was called up to serious reflection and great uneasiness, but and great uneasiness. But though my feelings were deep and often poignant, I still kept myself aloof. There's a fun word. Aloof means cool and distant, meaning I kept myself kind of away from these. Though I attended their several meetings as often as occasion would permit, in process of time. Again, this is something that took place over time. My mind became somewhat partial to the Methodist sect. And I felt some desire to be united with them, but so great were the confusion and strife among the different denominations that it was impossible for a person as young as I was, again, keeping in mind, this is Joseph in his 14th, 15th year, right around that time, and so unacquainted with men and things to come to any certain conclusion who was right and who was wrong. And then you get into verses 9 and 10, which really are so applicable to our day. My mind at times was greatly excited. The cry and tumult. Tumult is a loud, confusing, disorderly mass. Again, you look at this last year, right? And the tumult were so great and incessant. Incessant is without ceasing pause or interruption. The Presbyterians were most decided against the Baptist and the Methodist and all and used all the powers of both reason and sophistry. Sophistry is the use of false arguments, especially with the intention of deceiving. Again, you when you combine the, the tumult and incessant sophistry, yeah, it's no different than our day, the what's going on. And in the midst of this war of words, as Joseph called it, and the tumult of opinions, I often said to myself, what is to be done? 
who of all these parties are right, or are they all wrong together? If any one of them be right, which is it, and how shall I know it? And so hopefully that gives you a little bit of a, of a setup for what Joseph is going through, where his mind is going, and honestly, it describes perfectly any honest seeker of truth in the year 2021. Same stuff going on, and what we're gonna talk about tomorrow is how to gain truth has not changed either. It is the exact same way. So anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing and thanks for sharing. You guys are amazing. Godspeed and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.